radioactive half-life. We've talked about materials that undergo radioactive decay. This is a this is a process that occurs on its own. It's a spontaneous process. And anything that's radioactive, you leave it alone, and it will decay. So we can consider something called a half-life, which is the time that it takes for half of the original sample to remain. Right? And if we take a look at this graph, let's say we started out with 10 grams of carbon. Um, and we wanted to date, uh, let's say this was 10 grams of some skin tissue, right? And we start out with 10 original grams. And we've got, so remember I also said that radioactive materials behave exactly the same as non-radioactive materials in, in sense of undergoing the same type of chemical reactions, right? So carbon dating is, if I have something that's living, it is taking in radioactive carbon and normal carbon, all the different isotopes of carbon, and it's, and it's incorporating this radioactive carbon into its tissues. Once it dies now, no more radioactive carbon is being absorbed in, or taken into the tissues. So whatever radioactive carbon that's left in the body at that time begins to decay over time. So for carbon, it takes 5,730 years for half of a sample to decay of carbon. So if two half-lives have passed and you have a substance, then it's probably about 10,000 years old, almost 11,000 years old. So let's see, we've got 10 grams. At one half-life, notice that we've got five grams remaining, and that's 50% of my original sample. After the second half-life, I now have 2.5 grams remaining, and notice that it's 25% of my original sample. After three half-lives, I have 1.25 grams of my sample, and it's 12.5% that remains. We can also say that this is half, this is uh, one-fourth, this is one eighth of the original amount. So after one half life, you have half of the substance remaining. After two half lives, you have one fourth of the original substance remaining. And after three half lives, you have one eighth. If after four half lives, we will have 0 0.625 grams remaining. And then that would be one sixth. Okay. One sixteenth of the original amount, or six point two five percent. All right. So let's do some half life practice. Let's say we start off with a sample of gallium sixty eight. It's got a half-life of 68.3 minutes. How much of an original sample that starts off as 160.0 milligrams is left after one half-life? Well, after one half-life, half of the original substance remains, so we've got 80 milligrams. And one half-life is 68.3 minutes. After the second half-life, this 80 is now reduced by half, and we end up with 40 milligrams. Two half-lives is 68.3 minutes times two, and we get 136.6 minutes. If we have three half-lives, now that 40 milligrams is going to be reduced by half, and we have 20 milligrams remaining after three half-lives, which is 204.9 minutes. So what percent remains? Well, after one half-life, we have 50%. After two half-lives, we have 25%. And three half-lives, we have 12.5%, which is what, one-eighth? one-fourth, 
and one half. All right, so let's do a couple practice problems. Iron 59 is used in medicine to diagnose blood circulation disorders. The half-life of iron 59 is 44.5 days. How much of a two milligram sample remains after 135 days? Okay, all right, we got a lot here. Let's figure it out, what are we given? I'm given my half-life, which is 44.5 days. I'm also given that I have an original sample of 2.00 milligrams. And I'm also given 133.5 days. That's the total time. And this is my original amount. Right? So we need to figure out number one. Number one. We need to know how many half-lives have passed. And then we need to know the amount remaining. Remaining. Can't spell. All right. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many half-lives. Well, I've got a total amount, so if I want to know what is my half-life, it's just you're going to take your total amount, total time, divided by, oh, the number of half-lives is what we're looking for, divided by the actual half-life. So what do I have? I've got 133.5 days divided by my actual half-life, which is 44.5 days. And we actually end up with three half-lives. All right, well now that we know that we have three half-lives, then we can determine what our amount is. So if we start off with 2.00 milligrams, after one half-life, we should end up with what? 1.000 milligrams. After two half-lives, we should end up with what? 0 0.500 milligrams. And then after our third half-life, we'll have half of that, and we end up with 0 0.250 milligrams. Okay? So we end up with 0 .0, 0 0.25 milligrams. What percentage is that of the original amount that remains? But remember, after three half-lives, it's either going to be 12.5% or 1 eighth remaining. Let's try one more. In this problem, we'll need to calculate the half-life. A sample initially contains 150 milligrams of radon-222. After 11.4 days, the sample contains 18.75 milligrams. And we need to calculate the half-life. All right, so what are we given? Well, I'm given 150 milligrams. And that's my original, my original sample amount. And then we're given uh, 18.75 milligrams, and that's the final amount, sample amount. And we're also given 11.4 days, and this is our total time. So what do we need? Well, we need to figure out how many half-lives have passed. We need to know the number of half-lives passed. 
And then we can determine what the half-life is. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, you can either start with the, the original amount and count down, or we can start with the amount that's left over and count up. So if I say I have 150 milligrams, half of that is 75 milligrams, half of that is 37.5 milligrams, half of that is 18.75 milligrams. Well, how many half-lives have passed? One, two, three. Let's count from the other way. Let's go, in, let's go from the final amount to the original amount. Well, if the final amount is, is 18.75 milligrams, double that, we get 37.5. Double that again, we get 75. Double that one more time, and we get 150 milligrams. Notice that we've got one, two, three half-lives that pass. So if we've got three half-lives, let me write that in a word. We've got three half-lives, and we've got 11.4 days. And I want to know what is the actual half-life. Well, that's going to be the total days, or the total time, I'll say, total time, total time divided by the number of half-lives. So we get 11.4 divided by 3, and we get 3.8 days. And that is our half-life. Our half-life is 3.8 days. Okay.